I know that a lot of these characters come from the comics, but I have to ridicule these creators because who came up with these stupid names and lame characters? I, I'm sorry, y'all. What's good, good people? Welcome back to Whole Views. Thank you for clicking that thumbnail. My name is Corey. Today we're going to be doing a video for Legion of Superheroes, an animated movie that was just released here on VOD. I got a chance to watch it and I must say, it was cool. It was cool. So getting right to it, I want to explain. I'm going to do a movie review on the front end and then I'm going to announce and put up little markers on the screen. When we get into the spoilers, talking about the movie in great detail. If you haven't seen it, please go check it out. But I think it was cool overall. And I want to go through and talk about the reason why I gave it the score I gave it. And I give it a seven. And the reason why we come down on it as a seven is very, very simple. I think the story part of the movie is probably one of the weaker points. It's a cool story that they're telling with Supergirl being a person that is out of place, out of time, and doesn't know where she want to fit. The problem is I think they tried to deliver some surprises that were not surprises. But more on that when we get to the spoiler section. Let's talk about the visuals here. Now, this is that flat 2D like animation style. And People who frequent the channel, you'll know that I am a sucker for animation. I do love all different styles and I do like my anime and I do like certain animated features that have come out from DC in the past. I've enjoyed most of them. And with all the shakeups and stuff at DC and the things that they're doing, it makes me wonder, is this 2D style going to continue? Is this storyline that they're setting up with like Superman, Man of Tomorrow and Batman, Son of the Dragon, I think it was, or Son of the Demon, something like that. And there was a bunch of different little animated ones. There was a Justice Society one, like all that stuff came out. I'm wondering if that style is going to be like continued moving forward or will there be this big event and they will change art styles like they did with Apocalypse War. Regardless of what they do, I do feel like I enjoy what they presented to us here visually. I enjoyed the action. I enjoyed most of the comedy. It's just the story to me felt mm, slightly weak. And again, we'll get to that in the spoiler section when we talk specifically about what I did not enjoy. Pace and entertainment value was really good. I like the storytelling mechanics that got Supergirl on Earth and her backstory told way easier than they normally tend to do things like dragging out that origin story. So I was cool with that. And the entertainment wise, I thought it was cool because they introduced a little group that I'm not really familiar with, but I enjoyed getting to know each of the new characters. And again, in that spoiler section, I have to talk about those characters in great detail. It was a cool little movie overall. It's not going to be some award winning film or anything like that. It was a cool little addition to the animated DC universe. I like that universe that they try to stitch together every few years with the different animated features and connecting all the characters without any restrictions with voice actors and theatrical versions of different characters. They have free reign over everybody available to them. And I like that now, I like how they put this one together. I am positive on it. It wasn't the best of these little features, but it was a cool one to say the least. Now, moving from that point on to the spoiler discussion. So here we are talking spoilers about specific things that happen in the movie. And my first thought that I have to get out the way is that I know that a lot of these characters come from the comics, but I have to ridicule these creators because who came up with these stupid names and lame characters. I, I'm sorry, y'all. The collection of characters that we are introduced and get to spend time with in this movie have easily, easily, easily have to be the worst group of superheroes that I've ever seen collectively. Dawnstar and Monel were the only two characters that had names that I thought was like respectable. Everybody else had the stupidest, weirdest names that I ever heard of. And I know, again, I, I looked up some of these characters. Some of these guys have come from the 1960s, but I guess all the creative juices was gone by the 1960s because Bouncy Boy, for real? Triplicate girl. That's that's what we doing. She splits into three. Triplicate girl. I think one of them's names was like Chemical Kid. Then there was Discount Wolverine, Timber Wolf, Shadow Lass. What is that? And the king of all names, Arms Falls Off Boy. No, nope, I stand corrected. Arms Fall Off Man. That's what he chose to rename himself towards the end of the movie. It was a funny little line because it's the character recognizing that his name is lame and his powers are lame. 
in this movie kind of stretched to give everybody something to do when in truth some of these characters are useless you could have got like one or two people to do everything that everybody did but they they gave everybody a moment which i guess is cool but it was it was kind of weird the way y'all stretched to make arms fall off boy relevant and useful in like here ugh, it was ugh, that hit that character in particular was disgusting going back to the surprises that weren't really surprises like the story wanted to make you believe certain things but you could kind of tell early on that some of these things were just like misdirects. So Brainiac 5 being a villain, but not really being a villain, being a good guy. I feel like that was one that they tried to like misdirect and make you think he was bad. But I kind of knew instantly that he was going to be a good guy. The romance between Supergirl and Brainiac 5, that was kind of like, ooh, they, they like each other. And she receives and she actually, you know, thinks highly of him too and she got her little eyes on him too that wasn't really that much of a surprise either it's something that you can see very early on that her character was kind of boy crazy in this and the fact that she kind of falls for brainiac and they become a little couple not that surprising based on the trajectory of the character based on when we meet her in the beginning monel being a bad guy that was kind of surprising i didn't think that he was working with brainiac uh, the Brainiac double cross that you get toward the end where he's, you know, turns on my nail and he's trying to take over the whole universe. It's like, yeah, that's cool. I like the way that that played out. That was good enough. But even Triplicate Girl was was killed in this and she's <laughs> she got reduced to Duplicate Girl. And I thought to myself, like, yo, that's I don't believe for one second that a character actually died in this, you know. Not at all. But I guess that's it, y'all. The movie was a pretty good movie. It's worth your time if you really like the DC animated stuff. Now, if you're not big into animation or if you haven't been following the little storyline that they're trying to set up with the Justice Society and like this new version of all these characters, then maybe you skip over this one. But I enjoyed it. I think it was worth my time. And I think it'll be worth yours too if you're into the animated stuff. Enjoy yourself, guard your heart, and go watch something good.